Hello everybody. Welcome to week two of the vehicle modeling with Blender class. Uh, hello to my fellow Blender nerds, vehicle modeling enthusiasts, hard surface enthusiasts, uh, welcome. So at this point in the class, in week one, uh, we have done our stretches. We have um, gotten our feet wet in this, in this realm of modeling again, uh, whether you're coming to it for the first time. Hopefully some of those exercises were introductory for you and uh, a good intro. Um, but then also for people who maybe haven't been modeling for a while, brush up on those skills, uh, get started again. And, uh, and now for week two, we're ready to really uh, stretch our legs in terms of modeling. Um, so we are going to be looking at the exterior of our vehicle of choice. And, um, and yeah, also by this point, you should have chosen the vehicle that you want to model, uh, either just chosen the vehicle in general, but also have blueprints. That's kind of uh, a point that I need to, I need to come to, but, um, we're ready to begin modeling the vehicle that will model the rest of the class. So, um, uh, a couple things, you know, like usual, please, if you have a question, uh, add the, or put question in all caps as the prefix, just so I can find that easily. And uh, again, this is a temporary measure until we can build a better system to accommodate the question asking and answering stuff. So uh, yeah, fire away questions. That's of course what the live stream uh, is valuable for in, 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 uh, in, a, in one way. So um, yeah, we'll get right to work and uh, talk about, um, yeah, vehicle exterior modeling. But before we get into that um, explicitly and in depth, we're going to look back at week one which is typical with the class format. I like to see uh, things like, I like to call attention to some of my favorite submissions. And these are my favorite planes from the from week one. We, uh, which I should say that uh, as as more of a, it, it, the course that it, the plane came from is called Intro to Hard Surface Modeling. So it's a simple model, um, all things considered. Um, but what stood out to me was when people took that simple model and presented it uh, in a very, a uh, good way, like a notable way. And that's what these represent to me. They, um, from Aaron, we've got a, a turntable render of a, of a, you know, appealing clay style um, lighting setup. And then we've got an interior of the cockpit. Um, and then finally a fully shaded and even textured um, uh, scene inside of like a hanger. And so the fact that you took a simple model and you presented it so well and took the time to present it that way uh, really struck me and like you took pride in the work. And um, and I think that's really cool. Um, it's that kind of extra flair that's gonna make make work noticeable. And so uh, also Katarina Novakova, who often appears in my favorites um, uh, by coincidence, I'm not looking for you explicitly, but uh, you you always have good work that I end up uh, liking. So uh, I like your your rendition of the of the Pokemon theme and incorporating those two uh, Pokemon into your airplane. It's just a nice little touch. Um, you did a good job lighting and shading. Um, just, it stuck out to me, I remembered it, and uh, and it features your, your, um, your airplane model, but gives it some fun context. And so I thought that was a good job. And then similarly, Lolito Larkham, uh, I like, I mean, I have a three-year-old that I watch a lot of like kids cartoon and animations with. And this, as soon as I saw it was like, that belongs. That is a screenshot from one of those shows. And uh, I think that's cool. I think that's a really appropriate way to present the model given its cartoony features and aesthetic. And I like that you added the propeller with some motion blur to give it a little bit of, of action in the scene, um, not just completely static. So I love the colors, love the, the blurred out background. Just anyway. The point with these, I like that you took a simple exercise and you you polished it um, further than was expected. I think that's really cool. Um, and then also my favorite primitive exercises, which is even more basic than the, than the than the airplane, in that you're literally just taking pre-existing shapes and then stacking them together as if they were blocks or Legos almost. And uh, and so the expectations are very low with the primitive exercises. They can be anything as long as you do uh, you know primitives. Um, and everybody did a great job with this. But then some some of you went over and beyond. And these are some examples. Again, Lolito Larkum. Um, I like that you you took these primitives and made a legit like warehouse or shed barn type thing. Like honestly, you know, if I stare at it, I can tell that they're simplified shapes. Um, but 
I wouldn't have guessed when I first looked at it. It just looked like a model of a shed. So I think that was pretty impressive. All the structural elements that you included and the bracing, um, the fact that the the window has like a, whatever the, I forget what that's called in between, you know, like to signify the panes in the glass. Um, yeah, it's just an impressive primitive work when it could have been done very simple. Um, you just went over and beyond. I like that a lot. Um, Jack 07, this enormous castle thing. Uh, I was very impressed as soon as I saw that. It's an entire scene. You know, we've got the moon up in the sky and all this is just made of, cu of cubes and cylinders, cones. Um, it, yeah, it's just really impressive. I, I really like how, how over and beyond you went with the exercise. And also Bach, um, I love your Lord of the Rings tower with the Eye of Sauron up there. Um, I like that you were able to kind of create some curvature or at least the, the feeling of curvature like in these horns right here. Uh, I can tell when you get close, it's just a regular cone and a couple cylinders that are like placed and rotated slightly to give the impression of a curve. Uh, the, the eyeball is um, two cones on either side with a sphere in the middle. And when they intersect with each other, it creates the almond shaped eye. Anyway, I just think it's a, it's a, it's a clever way to use primitives and, and impress me with such a simple, a simple exercise. And um, yeah, really great work. Uh, um, everyone really did a good job on both exercises. I don't think I gave anyone less than an A. If you did the exercise, I gave you an A because expectations, you know, are pretty low, but everybody did um, very well with it. So good job with the homework exercises. And um, also in week one, uh, I wanted to draw attention to our volunteer assistants. So when I, I called, you know, for the for assistance, uh, three of you did respond. And I appreciate that you guys are volunteering your time to help me by helping everyone else in the class. So thank you for that. Zolt, everybody, anyone who's taken a class should know uh, Zolt already. He, uh, he out of nowhere created the report card document that I use and he maintains it and he adds each new class. Uh, and so I just have to fill in the blanks, which is good because I'm not a great spreadsheet person. Um, so he's creating all those cool charts and, and gathering statistics. So really appreciate Zolt. He's been a, a huge help for, for all three classes. So he's here and he's also, I've seen him, you probably have seen him in the community thread giving advice and, and being present there as well. Silent Heart, double zero. Um, he's been in the community for a long time. You probably recognize him as well. He's also been in the thread giving advice, helping people out and Tebow as well. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Tebow, for being there. I've seen great advice already in the thread. So thanks all to all three of these people. They're being a huge help to me, a huge help to you guys. And so if you if you get advice from, from them, just know that they're like my volunteer assistants. They're not, you know, some random guy giving, giving you advice. Even though random guys giving advice are completely welcome, I guess. But um, thank you. Thank you to you three. And um, all right. Yeah. One more thing. Grades. Wow. I put that. Uh, whoops with the weird exclamation point at the bottom. Um, I wanted to go over the report card real quick because I gave you all access to view the report card, but um, it might be confusing, you know, like it's in some somewhat of my language, me and Zolt, I guess. And I just wanted to clear anything up. So um, the way that I look at homework is just a metric for giving XP in a way, and also for more legitimately measuring the uh, participation in the class, right? So people, you know, watch the stream and that's great, but um, I don't think watching the stream alone counts as like participation. You know, I want to see that you're learning something, you're uh, listening to instructions, you're 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 doing you know the required steps to uh, that I will judge, that I am able to judge how the participation is. And so um, with that, this is kind of how I gauge officially who's participating, and we've got 39 so far. Um, which is great. That's like a few more than we've ever had. And that's awesome. So I, I, uh, I, I'm very excited to see some this level of participation, especially with an advanced topic. But um, with this first exercise, or this first week of homework, it was broken down into three separate elements. You had your plane, your primitive exercise, and then your blueprint. Um, and that's the technical requirement. So, you know, uh, in the first one for Jeremy, the plane, you did the plane, you did the primitive exercise, you did the blueprint and you get an A, you know, all those were A's. And so they combine them into, into one. Now, if anyone missed a certain point or just didn't submit, like um, we have a plane and then no permit exercise, no blueprint, that's either just your choice. You didn't submit that. And so, um, you know, you just get F's for that. No big, it's not really a big deal or it's me missing it, right? So I'm human. I might just overlook it in the linear thread. So if you're 
keeping track of this. Like, let me know if I make a mistake, if I just missed one of your submissions. Um, but with those blanks, I just averaged together the grades, right? Um, and so that's why you see three different letter grades. At the end, I'll average all of them together to give your final XP value. So um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the the report card. That it is also the um, June class BC three eighteen oh six. The tab down here, and then um, in very advanced fashion, in my opinion, Zolt has some charts so you can you know see some of the statistics from classes and who's gaining the most XP, um, doing the most homework. So that's kind of what that represents. Um, so yeah. That's the report card. And that is all for, yeah, that's all for kind of recapping week one, going over some housekeeping things. Okay, question from William. Will you go over how to model specific mechanical details? Um, I, I can definitely, if you want me to model something specific, um, you know, if you say uh, model a car engine, like that's, you know, I won't be able to do that. But if you want to know specific mechanical details, which I think of like, what's a mechanical detail to me? Um, I don't know, like levers and switches or like a, yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly. If you can give something, a given example that you'd like me to model, I'm open to do that. Today's demo, I expect to, to take a while, like maybe a full hour and a half or so of, of just the demo. Um, so yeah, feel free to, okay, springs and shocks, something like that. That's not a bad idea. I can do that. And an axle. So, I mean, this does bring up something in my vehicle. I wasn't planning on modeling like the undercarriage or the interior engine. I was mainly focusing on the exterior like panels, the stuff that you see when the car is sitting on the ground um, in like a default kind of environment. And then we'll also do the interior, but yeah, like a bolt, um, brake caliper. Okay, so apparently there are several uh, mechanical things that I could I could look into. Um, so yeah, I'll try to make some time to model some of that stuff. Um, the main thing I wanna cover is, is how to achieve the complex curvature of a vehicle exterior that's common bet among most most vehicles so that's the the main thing i, I wanted to, to show how to model um and then you know I'll, I'll try to make some time to model some of that other stuff but uh all right so yeah vehicle exterior um let's see vehicle exterior right so this is an important thing because i think most vehicles are recognized by the exterior you know, maybe some people can recognize a car by the interior, but but I certainly cannot. And But I can tell you that this is a late 1990s Jeep versus a early 2000s Jeep by the exterior. Like, I'm not a big car person, but I can do that because of the um, exterior alone. And so the exterior is, is a very important part of the car. And uh, uh, we have been gifted um, very generously from Milan Ivanov, uh, this car design that he came up with. And um, he was kind enough, I reached to him out, uh, I reached to him on ArtStation. And uh, here you can see his profile, he's got, or the portfolio, he's got several car designs, uh, both drawn and modeled. Um, very cool stuff here. So give him a follow. Um, also on Instagram, down here in the bottom corner, Milinski, um, very kind to, to let us use this model. And uh, it's, it's a super cool design, so I'm excited to, to model it. And you are welcome to use this art as well to model the vehicle. If you do, I mean, maybe send that to Milan, and I'm sure he'd be flattered that you modeled his car design. So uh, thank you, Milan, very much for allowing us to use this. Very, very helpful. And um, okay, yeah, so the idea of working from blueprints, someone asked a question about if blueprints were required for this class. And uh, I wanted to answer that in, in, in a way, so uh, there's a couple ways to approach modeling, right? And I've taught both ways from from the very loosely, uh, from loosely adhering to a blueprint or a modeling sheet, uh, and you're more conceptual, you're more designing the 3D as you go. I certainly teach that and recommend that for more organic things, um, typically like characters, like you do interpretation, you don't Xerox it, so to speak. and but for, but for this particular class, I wanted to teach the blueprints because cars, vehicles in general, um, are, so, um, are so good for that, right? They're the perfect example of something to model from an orthographic blueprint into the third dimension, into three dimensions. So that's why I wanted to teach that way specifically. There's some tr tips and tricks along that uh, particular workflow. That being, so uh, let me start over. So that is what I'm expecting and that's kind of what the curriculum is built around, at least for this week. Um, 
Um, but if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Like I don't want, what's more important to me that you participate in the class and you, you learn something, even if you don't follow the curriculum a hundred percent, um, is that more important or do I wish that you would just follow and obey all the rules? Like it's definitely the former. I want you to enjoy this, do what you're passionate about. And if that means doing a concept car, that's totally fine. I think William, I think you're doing one. I think you're doing a concept tank right now. So, I mean, that's totally fine. I can't really do both um, fully, right? Um, so I'm erring on the side of the blueprint method. Um, but if you want to do a concept, I'm going to be fine with that. You know, I can't imagine why I would say, no, you can't do that. Unless you came in here saying like, hey, I want to model an animal. Does that still count? You know, <laughs> well, obviously no. Um, but in general, I want to be want to be the cool teacher. I want to be flexible and let you guys uh, promote your your enjoyment and your learning, not just rule following. So anyway, um, with that said, the uh, blueprint method. So we have this art and one of the first things that I realized when I started uh, modeling this car and I did, I tested this and I, I kind of R and D it, you know, did some rehearsal with it. Um, with all of these lines happening in the art, it can get fairly confusing to, to really understand what's happening. And, and not until you get into the modeling process, are you able to distinguish what pieces are, are what pieces, right? So like you have different, from different angles, this like wheel well, for example, is, is occluding a lot of the details behind the wheel well. And we don't really see that detail except maybe from the top view, but we have no information from the side. And so like that's something to keep in mind about a blueprint is you're, you're going to have to fill in some gaps, but less gaps, of course, than if you weren't adhering to the blueprint uh, fully. Um, but one of the first things that I came to realization is that I needed to separate the model into multiple pieces. Um, because when I tried, if I tried to approach the model as one solid piece, I would drive myself nuts. And, and that's why it, whether you do this explicitly and you take your image into a photo image editor and you start um, coloring it the way I have, or you just you, you um, get into the mindset of separating your car into various pieces, um, either way, just, just mm, be aware that this needs to be a, a model made of separate pieces. It does not need to be one solid mesh. And, um, and you know, there's that varies, I guess, depending on your car. Uh, but in general, like cars are built in separate pieces, so it makes sense to model them in separate pieces, not as one watertight uh, thing. And so, okay, we're gonna model in separate pieces. That's gonna be number one. That's gonna relieve a lot of pressure when you start modeling for how I'm gonna construct this. Just if, if you feel like this is hard as one piece, okay, then just separate it. Um, you know, there's a lot of construction lines in here that makes it very easy to separate. And that's pretty consistent among cars in general. Um, okay, so yeah, we've got the, the separation. Now, I've seen several people who have already started modeling the car. And, and what's been really intriguing about it is that you discovered exactly what I discovered and that box modeling is not good for it. Very, very unintuitive for turning a primitive shape, generally a box, even a sphere or something into a car with, with appropriate topology. So here I took this example from, uh, I forgot who it was. Maybe it was, maybe it was Jeremy. Um, I forgot, but, uh, somewhat, this is an early stage that they've already gone on and, and, and uh, improved it significantly, but you can see that this started as probably a box because one of the distinguishing features is the grid pattern, right? So we have these edges running along the specific axes, right? The X axis by the red, red line, the green axis, you have grid, a grid format going in the topology. And that immediately becomes a big problem when you need to cut across that, when you need to have slanted geometry or um, a curved contour, because it, does, it, it completely contradicts the grid format. But because the grid is there, you still wanna like maintain it, but it's so confusing. Um, and so this image to me was perfect uh, in displaying like how that is difficult, how, how the box modeling method is very difficult for, for the complex curved structures of a vehicle. Um, and so I say ditch box modeling. Do not do box modeling for this class, for this, for this uh, vehicle modeling. Instead, we're gonna do edge modeling. And that's what I'm gonna do the entire demo unless I start modeling some bolts and stuff like that, um, some mechanical details. But, Edge modeling is the biggest concern here because it's, I would say, one of the, one of the 
more artisan techniques to learn. Um, and so edge modeling, kind of the definition of it is instead of starting with existing geometry, you're just going to start with the components of vertices and edges. And you're going to highlight the key contours, which in a blueprint is pretty much your harsh white lines. Um, so right here, I've identified this piece. So I separated it. Remember earlier, I talked about separating, dividing your, your model into separate pieces. I've identified the contour edges in the front view and then aligned them in the side view. Okay, that's gonna, it's kind of like, it's actually a very fun exercise, I would say, of like connecting the dots, connecting two 2D images into one 3D model. Um, and then once you uh, identify and create those uh, contour edges, you simply fill in between with geometry. And I think you'll find that naturally that creates much better topology. It's less, it's, you're, you're not fighting the mesh as much. You are creating rather than conforming something to another shape. And uh, so edge modeling is going to be the ticket. And, and that's pretty much it. That's like, it's this process over and over and over again for the exterior. And so that's what we're going to be focusing on uh, in the demonstration that's going to come very shortly. This is one of the shorter uh, lectures or whatever. Um, because this isn't rocket science, but it is an art and it does take time and practice. Um, okay, yeah. So to end the presentation, the week two agenda, the goal is to build the exterior of your chosen vehicle based on blueprints. But, you know, I've already gone over that. Um, that's what the curriculum revolves around. Um, but if you'd want to do a concept vehicle, that's fine too. I'll figure out a way to, to grade that and, and like, you know, try and make it fair and all that stuff. Um, but the point in choosing this is that it'll be good practice in strictly adhering to orthographic front, side, back, and top view modeling. And the only other thing I'll say about that is, is um, in all the professional modelers that I've worked with, Rarely do you find someone who's able to conceptually design something and model it well, right? Usually you have a designer who either draws it on paper um, or, yeah, I mean, I guess that's typically what a designer does. Um, and then you have someone model it. You rarely find the combination of the two. I like to try and design things, but it's not my wheelhouse. I'm, I envy the concept person who can think of a unique shape or a unique something, you know, character, be it whatever, um, unique environment. But like, I try to do that stuff, but but it's not my wheelhouse. My wheelhouse is modeling from reference. So I've, I find that there's a distinction usually between a designer and a modeler. And that's why with modeling, you always have reference to go with it or a modeling sheet or a blueprint. And so that's the, that's, I would say by far the majority of, of um, uh, the, the, the most common skill set um, in, involved in modeling. And that's why I'm choosing that for this course. Um, but I will also say that in week four, we're going to do concept sculpting for a vehicle, um, just as practice, just to see the other side of the coin, just to try and create something unique from, from sculpting um, in, in the context of a vehicle. But anyway, so the curriculum is around orthographic blueprint-based modeling. The pre-recorded courses to watch, Modeling a Post-Apocalyptic -apoc Vehicle. This one is from Jonathan Williamson. And um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, I mean, it's a good one. It's been around for a couple years at least. And um, yeah, I mean, it's one, of the, it's one of the last courses that he did, if I recall. So, you know, Jonathan Williamson is one of the, one of the greats. A uh, really good course. And then Modeling a Motorcycle. That's another author, uh, Chris Kuhn, who is an incredible modeler and, and, and different. He, he models different than I. So you get another perspective on how to model things. That's, um, um, he does a great, great job modeling. So um, that one's a good course too. Both are a little more in the advanced realm, but um, very applicable. So you can, you know, lean against those courses throughout the week. And then the homework assignment, just one item, model the exterior of your chosen vehicle, post images and or a Sketchfab embed. Now I say embed when I said, when I posted that, I didn't realize that the embed isn't working currently. So like most of you have done, just a link to the, to the Sketchfab is good for now. Sorry about that not working. Let's see if I missed any questions. Uh, yeah, so question, the blueprint sometimes is not correct from all views. With time, the issue gets bigger and bigger. How to overcome um, such a thing? Um, that sucks actually, um, because I don't know, the point of, of a blueprint is that they're going to be perfectly oriented and aligned. And especially with an industrial design like a car, a vehicle like that should that should be something you can depend on. If it's not, 
Um, that's a bummer. So if, if that were me and I got a blueprint and in the modeling process realized that they're not 100% aligned, maybe I would try to align them in, in like Photoshop or GIMP or, or Krita or something, like try and make them li line up because that, that, yeah, what do you do when they don't line up? You might have to, I don't know, I guess otherwise you just, you favor one of the views if it's your, the side view and then you just are okay with it not lining up, but that sucks because a blueprint by definition is supposed to be lined up 100%. Um, let's see, I'm wondering if I can, I don't know, I'd love to see like how exactly they don't line up. Maybe in the community thread, if you can post an image of like, you know, showing like how they definitely don't line up. Because the other side is maybe, maybe you haven't aligned them 100% yourself. I'm, I'm gonna do that in, this, in the demo. Um, to show you like how to line up the images. Um, and maybe there's discrepancy is if, if we get that 100% correct. But anyway, um, another question, is it possible to match blueprints 100% from all sides? I have difficulty every time I have a slight difference between views. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say, I mean, you know, 100%, I guess is relative to what we all mean by that. But, um, you know, I would say that like what I'm going to do is, is going to get it using the, using the, um, Using this vehicle for Milan, like his his uh, blueprint, I believe he rendered it from the model, so it should be 100% accurate from all angles. And if that's the assumption, then if it ever doesn't match up in 3D, it means we haven't done something correct. We haven't aligned the background images correctly. Um, so, but yeah, we should be able to model it 100%. Uh, you know, it might be a couple pixels off here and there, but like in general, 100%. Any other questions? Cool. So yeah, I mean, I guess it, it brings into question, if you guys are finding that your blueprints are not aligned in all the views, I guess just the bummer that maybe view, uh, blueprints we find online aren't as reliable as, as I assumed that they would be. Um, yeah. But yeah, blueprints of fantasy things are sometimes just wrong, so you have to make stuff up. Yeah, that's true. That is true. And that's, you're, you're bringing up part of the issue being a modeler, ideally we would have something that matches up 100%, but who could, who can actually do that? It's a hard, it's a hard task to make stuff match up unless you have like a, a CAD design of a car that you print out blueprints for, um, which I guess that isn't everybody, but okay. So people, yeah, my blueprint doesn't align either. Bummer. Um, that sucks. Not sure what to do about that. Like what advice other than just to fudge it and, and do the best you can. Uh, we all, yeah, we all kind of have to go through that a little bit. But if you use the, if you use Milan's, if you use this one, take my word for it, it's, it aligns very, very well. Um, so anyway, all right, so that's it for the presentation. Let's actually get down to the demo at this point. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna sh start from scratch, just select everything, delete it in the, in the viewport. And um, yeah, so I mean, sit back, like this will be a fairly long demo. I'm expecting it to take the next hour and a half or so. Readjust. I wanna be able to get a little more comfortable. All right. And um, you're, I'm gonna start from scratch, I'm gonna load in our background images. Now, I should say that unfortunately, I've discovered today that that with uh, OBS streaming, um, using background images significantly slows down Blender, and I have not found a fix to it, um, unfortunately. But I will show you how to set set it up. So, we're going to use the background image method. It actually slows down worse if I use image planes. So, I'm going to enable background images and click Add Image, and I'm going to go open that. Um, let's see, I'm gonna open, I've got several versions of the color coded. This is me trying to like shrink the file size as much as possible. Um, even though I realize that that doesn't necessarily help with the viewport slowdown, it's more the pixel resolution. Um, yeah, get the popcorn, there you go. Try and enjoy it. it you know, modeling is not the most action packed thing in the world, but um, you all should probably know that and you're not maybe expecting that to be the case. All right, so uh, I've hit one on the number pad to go one and five. So one to go into orthographic, I'm sorry, one to go into front view and then five to go to ortho. You can see it's up here in the upper left corner. And we can see our image, 
but we just want this to be viewable in the front, uh, in the front angle. And so with that established, I'm going to use these, this X and Y value to align, wait, whoops, I'm gonna click and drag to align it. I'm gonna put the front angle of our, of our uh, drawing of our blueprint, try and match up the, the blue line, the Z axis to be as close to the middle of the car as I can, as I can eyeball it. Um, and then I wanna place it on the ground with the Y axis, just so that the wheels are touching that red line. Okay, that looks pretty good. <laughs> now I'm hungry. Um, all right, so here's something, I, I guess, if you want someone that brought it up in the community thread, if you wanna get close to a scale, um, you know, the, the principle of just modeling this vehicle, the size it would actually be. Now this is a concept vehicle, so it doesn't exist in real life. But if I jump over to trusty Google and type in dimensions of Lamborghini, let's, let's do this one, Aventador. All right, we'll look at it. And yeah, that's probably in the ballpark of what, what our, our concept vehicle would be like. And so conveniently we have, let's say 190 inches length, 80 inches in width, 45 inches in height. Okay, so that's that's information that we can, um, over in Blender, we can add a box or a cube. Shift A and click Mesh Cube. And I'm just gonna straight over to the dimensions. All right, right here. Now, by default, currently with 2.79, it uses Blender units, um, which are like an arbitrary um, uh, number. So I'm gonna switch to uh, Length Imperial, since I'm in America. And using uh, inches and, and feet, I'm going to type in, uh, let's see, I need to make sure it's in the right order. So y, our, our y-axis is going to be the length of the car. That's going to be 190 inches. And then the x value is going to be the width, which was 80 inches. And then the height is going to be, what was that, 45 inches? Okay, so now we've got the dimensions of our car, and we can place that on the ground plane, and then we can scale our blueprint to uh, fit within that context. So I just need to scale it down slightly, about like that, and then, yeah, so align it like so. Okay, so now we've got some important values established that we can copy and paste to our other views. And I can just get rid of this, well, I won't get rid of the box, I'll leave it there for now. Uh, oh, because I gotta align the side view too. The car looks like, looks as if he is angry with life. <laughs> yeah, it's got this, it's definitely got an edginess to it, a sharpness to it. Um, kind of a, yeah, an edgier person, like uh, someone who's, I don't know, smokes and rides motorcycles, that kind of edginess, if the car was a person. Um, a Decepticon, yeah, there you go. That's, that's a good way to say it, an evil vehicle. All right, so we've got the front view established. Let's, uh, I need to add another image and change it to the side. Actually, it's not side. I think it's the right view. So yeah, I think it's the right. And if I hit three, okay, that takes me to the right ortho. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Um, and here I can just select the image we've already loaded. And I'm gonna copy the, the size value just from the first, from the front uh, background image. Control C as I hover over that value, paste it here, and that shrinks it to the right size. And then I can use the Y value to place the wheels on the floor. So Control C and then Control V. And there we go. Yeah, okay, so I mean, this vehicle's a little, anyway, it's a little shorter, let's say, than, than the Lamborghini Aventador or whatever that was that we found. Um, but it still fits within the dimensions. All right, so now that's placed properly. Let's go to the back view, control one, to get to the back orthographic. And let's do the same process. Add an image, choose the back. The image we've already loaded, let's copy the size. Copy the Y value. And move the X slide it over so it fits within. And I'm, I'm being pretty close, I'm just eyeballing it. Um, once we add the model with the mirror modifier, like that will help us, you know, massage those values if we need. 
And, uh, but for now, I think this is plenty close. And just one more, I wanna do the top view. So add an image, change the view to top. And we will copy the size value. That's pretty much the only thing we can copy at this point, or for this one. I'm not even looking at the top view yet. There we go. I also need to rotate it. So we can do that here. Let's go 90 degrees. And I actually need to go the other direction, negative 90. There we go. I'm uh, pretty sure, yeah, okay, negative 90. Um, all right, now slide it over. There we go, that should be good. All right, so now we've got our views aligned, front, back, top, and side. Um, um, okay, sorry. Uh, all right, so now that we've got that established, here's something that I literally never use in Blender, um, but I, I do recommend it for this situation, and it's the quad view. So I don't know if you knew that Blender even had a quad view, but the hotkey is Control-Alt-Q. All right, so this is pretty typical among other applications, other 3D apps, to have your perspective view up in the top corner and then right, ortho, top, you know, in, in these other quadrants. I've never used it for Blender, but um, I am with this. So uh, hooray for quad view. And all right, so we're ready to get started with the edge modeling approach. And to do that, I'm just gonna take our cube, since it's there, tab into edit mode. Well, first I'm going to control A in object mode. Is that right? Yeah, control A, apply the uh, scale. I actually wanna do all three, scale, rotation, and location, because I changed the dimensions of that cube and it would, it would just be out of whack. So uh, they're now even out, even out is not the right term, they're kind of zeroed out, right? So my location is alt zero, rotation at zero, scale at one. That's, um, Maya used to call it like freezing, I think. So it's just, uh, yeah, it's kind of like starting fresh with the mesh. There's no transforms on it. Um, cool. So tabbing into, sorry, I see an active chat and I'm looking for questions, but y'all are just hanging out, which is awesome. Um, all right, so tabbing into, whoops, um, edit mode. I'm gonna select a vertex, control I to invert it and remove uh, all vertices except for the one. Okay, so this is how we're gonna start. And uh, I'm just gonna start with the, the side, the wheel well area. And um, you can see how Blender is sort of chugging along just really whenever I move a vertex, which is kind of strange. But yeah, it's, it lags behind significantly, which is frustrating. But anyway, we'll just we'll just work with it. So I'm going to I place my vertice, my, well, my vertex in the corner, and I'm just going to extrude a few verts out from it because it's a it's somewhat of a corner. It needs a few more vertices um, surrounding it to really establish that shape. But then for the the more straight or broader curves, um, we can you know, uh, put a little more room in between the verts, something like this. But then as we get near the corner again, we're gonna concentrate a few more whoops, vertices. Usually three, right? So it's sort of like a holding edge. You got your defining point right here and then a vert on either side of that point. So that's kind of how I'm ballparking this. And, uh, all right, so before I go too much further, well, let me go down the front and extrude maybe once, twice into the corner. And remember, I'm just separating this piece. I'm gonna ignore this little uh, wing, you know, little thin section right here. Just gonna ignore it. All right, and so now once I start coming into the actual, the area closest to the wheel that encircles the wheel, I'm just gonna keep in mind the verts on the outside and I'm gonna you know, match that number, okay? So I'm gonna extrude once, twice, keeping an eye on what's over on the other side of it, what corresponds. Now for this one, I think I can, since it's three verts, I'm eventually going to just pull it down into a quad like this, which would leave a, a single edge going down this way. 
So I'm kind of thinking of that ahead of time and therefore just extruding one vert there. Whoops, one vert to compensate for those three. And same over here. I actually might have too few edges at this point. Might need to add some a little down the road, that's okay. Actually, yeah, I think it's too low res right now. So let's add another vertex in here and just even it out a bit better. I see some talk about 2.8. Um, I think the foundation has done an amazing job, not only with the development, but also the documentation of the process, like seeing Pablo um, posting a lot of videos, pretty much it's, I don't know if it's daily or if it's at least every week. I wanna say it's multiple a week. Um, I think that's a brilliant way to go about the, uh, the, the like building excitement and also sharing like as it goes, being very open with the development. It's yeah, it's a super cool um, thing to watch. Whoops. Okay. I started filling in the faces, but I don't want to do that yet. Um, so yeah, kudos to the 2.8 team. I mean, I think it, I almost don't recognize it as Blender anymore um, in a good way. Like it just looks like such a legitimate app. Um, I mean, it seems like, it seems crazy that not not more not everyone's using Blender, you know, compared to the other apps. I don't know. That's kind of a silly statement. All right. So now that I've outlined all of these edges, the majority of these edges for this piece in the side view, um, now I need to translate that over to the front view or the top view. Okay. So right now the edges are off in space. They're in the middle of the car, not where they need to be. So I'm going to place them. In, in the X axis, just along this edge right here, right? Because it would make sense to connect that this is the same shape, right? The This this edge right here matches this edge. I mean, I just keep saying the obvious, but hopefully that makes sense because we want those to align. Now, the interior wheel actually extends out further in this direction, right along here. And so we want to now bring those verts out in X right there, okay? And then we can align it also where it needs to be. And this is how we're playing this connect the dots game. And we're gonna get the 3D shape just by connecting these edges. It's actually, I mean, it is pretty fun. It's a bit of a puzzle sometimes, but it's kind of fun. All right, so now at this point, all of our verts seem to be lining up, except this. Like, I might be thinking to myself, why isn't this aligning with that top corner? Is my artwork not aligned properly, or is my model not correct? And actually, my model's not correct. So we can see in the side view, we've got this extra edge outlining. So it creates this flat, this flat, you know, curve, this flat round detail in the car uh, exterior. And that means we just need to extrude out. I'm gonna take, let's see here. I'm also gonna bring this down, finish off this shape. I'm gonna stop it right here. Okay, so I'm gonna select these faces, these edges. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna actually right click. So I'm using left click select, which is not the default, but I'm, uh, I'm gonna, that means I gotta use right click to place my, my cursor right here at the center of the wheel. And the reason I'm doing that is with these edges selected, I'm gonna hit E to extrude and then scale out from my 3D cursor. And that's going to give us, whoops, how about S shift X so it doesn't scale in the X direction. All right, that's gonna, when I scale it up to match that contour, that's gonna make our verts align over here. All right, so we've, we've done the, the excavation, that's not right. We've done the translation of our artwork using our 3D space and using our model to figure out the shape better. And, uh, oh, Omar, I've, gave you, I've given you good insight, you, you say. That's awesome. Awesome, okay, it sounds like maybe it's clicking that why this method is much more, it, uh, is much more intuitive for modeling a vehicle. Um, I hope that's the case. All right, so we've got this contour starting to take shape in the 3D view, and it might not look like a, anything to do with the car yet, but once we start filling in the gaps, it certainly will. And um, so I just need to finish the rest of the shape over here. 
Now, okay, so we've got we've got a bit of a problem to where I know that this piece down here, well, first you got to ask yourself, what is this piece? Um, is it a continuation? Like, why are these lines intersecting? Why don't they line up quite correct? And I mean, well, I'm, I got to be honest, like I unfairly am aware that this is a separate piece of geometry. It's like a, uh, what do you call it? Like a runner or something, you know, like that bottom edge of a car. So I know that this is separate and I know that the wheel well stops right around in here. And so I needed the model really to understand that and to be accurate. But how would you make sense of that? Um, just from the orthographics alone, I'm not really sure how you would, to be honest with you. Um, and, and in fact, like when I first started modeling is like, I tried to keep that as one part of the mesh and, and that was confusing, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really have, I mean, I guess if you look from the top, you can kind of tell that the wheel well, you know, it stops right here. It kind of has this shape, and so it's clearly separated from whatever this runner is. You can, if you, if you really try, you can maybe understand it, but part of it's just getting into the model, like, and, and unfortunately getting stuck and being like, something is not lining up. And if you get stuck, maybe one of the answers is to separate it. Maybe it's a separate piece. And, um, and then when you look at it as separate pieces, it's going to help you understand, it's going to help you fill in the gap that this is a separate this can, this can be modeled on its own. And so I can bring this piece over here. If we look really closely at the art, we can see that the line does not continue straight. It kind of stops right here, has this little, you know, end to the straightness. And, and if we look over here, you can see that this, this uh, what do you call it? Wheel well piece, it kind of comes down straight and then it hooks into the body that way. Okay, and so I think that this is is the like edge of that hook when it goes into the body. So let's remove that grease pencil. All right, and so let's let's adhere to it that way. A question from Iyad. Um, if I wanted to come up with an imaginary car from the bottom of my thoughts, usually do people sculpt it or hard surface model it? Um, I find it weird sculpting a car. I, I'm sure that some people do it with hard surface modeling. I'm positive that they do. I mean, Milan might have done that. I don't see any evidence here that this was sculpted. Um, for, uh, that's not the right car. This one right here is the car we're modeling. And... Uh, also, okay, so yeah, it helps here. You can sort of see that this piece is separate, the one I was just talking about. Um, but this to me looks like he hard surface modeled it uh, from polygons, not not sculpted. That would be my guess. Uh, but for me, I find I find it more intuitive to actually sculpt it, and I'm going to show you that in the in the fourth week. That's what we're going to look at. Um, and. Let's see, a problem to solve here is, I might I maybe have the angle of this wrong. I need to bring the angle up this way. There we go. And then extrude more edges. But yeah, I know that people use ZBrush for sculpting cars. Um, I mean, I've seen, like blenders can definitely do it. Yeah, we're gonna see that. Um, but I would prefer sculpting for concepting a vehicle from the bottom of my thoughts. I like the way you kind of <laughs> described it that way. All right, so we've got these verts over here that aren't, aren't really obeying the artwork. Let's simply move them over in X. And in fact, maybe I can just select all of these verts. No, not all of them. Let's do these. Wait a minute. Yeah. I'm going to make all the verts here align exactly. So I've got this selected. I'm going to change my pivot to be active element. So it's focused on this. You can see it's rotating around this uh, white vertex. S, X, and 0 will align them, will scale them 100% in 0. 100% in that axis. And actually, from the top, we can see that I'm a little bit off. So let's just align those a bit better. 
There we go. I think that's pretty good. All right, so that's aligning much better. Let's check in. Cool. All right, so now that we've got the contours established, we can, you know, it's an easier, well, okay, so we've established the contours and we've also been mindful to make our verts match. So it's gonna be a, a pretty easy, I think it should be pretty easy, a pretty easy game of connecting them now. I think this is actually too many. Let's remove that. Control X, that's right. Someone in here told me about that hotkey. All right, so let's start filling this into an actual shape. All right, I'm just gonna skip over that one. I'm, that's gonna be, I'm gonna fix that in a little bit. Same here. Awesome. Now, uh, with the, uh, here's something to solve. So you'll notice that with the this edge that we created, it fades very nicely over here. And so that tells me that I'm interpreting that to be, this is a hard edge until about here, and then it softens out and it's no longer hard. And so I'm kind of preemptively modeling that way and starting to separate where this edge to be consistent, these edges would need to be over here. I'm just starting to spread them out because eventually they're gonna be completely smooth. And so that's just, you know, preparing for that, so to speak. All right, um, with that, I think I want, like these faces are pretty big, so I want to cut an edge in between. So control R to cut a new edge loop, and then we can merge at the center. Shift R to do that again, and then fill in here. All right, so let's look at this in shaded view. I'm also going to turn, let's see, where is it? Oh, it's in the T panel, so the quad view is kind of messing me up. I'm gonna smooth the shading and then also hit Control-3 in the viewport, which gives me uh, a subsurface modifier over here in the stack with a view level of three, so it's very, very smooth. And we can start to see what that curvature is like, what the surface is gonna be like. Um, a question, how do you fill those faces so quickly again? I'm sorry, I should say that that is in fact F2 add-on as Darren and Omar were saying. So you can find that it's included with the default uh, stock version of Blender in the user preferences add-ons F2. You just search that, you can enable it here. Also, I'm going to probably use, I like to have this tool enabled, but if you look up loop tools, that's another one that's included with Blender that I like to have on uh, at the start uh, by default. Um, so with that, with those enabled, you can hit save user preferences. So they'll be, they'll always be on when you load Blender. Um, that's enabling me to fill faces, uh, very easily. All right. So, um, let's see here. I cut this edge, but I want to know if, if there's, if it is just a straight connection from these two contours or if there's some sort of a curve, let me, let me, uh, let me go to another layer. Okay, so it looks pretty straight, actually. Let's test that. Let's see. Isn't, there we go. How do you, okay, can someone tell me how to, I forget how to draw straight lines with the grease pencil. Can someone tell me how to do that? I always forget that one. D control. D alt. Nope. How about D shift control? <laughs> Nuts. Does anyone know how to do that? Ah, oh, I forgot. Nuts. Okay. Well, I was trying to show that that this is pr actually does seem to have a curve. It's an option you can choose. D, where? Um, well, maybe it's not gonna happen. Okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Select the line mode from the tool panel. Oh, I forgot Grease Pencil has its own, I gotcha. Didn't used to work that way. All right. Okay, yeah, so once we draw a straight line, 
you can see that there is a subtle little curve right there. Thank you for the help, guys. Appreciate that. So that tells me if I go back to my model, we should probably select all of these. See if that, oh yeah, and it's totally true on the other end too. We need to push these in. So let's go all the way down and push them in just a little bit with Alt S. It looks like it's very subtle on this end, but it's actually pretty strong up here. So I'm gonna like fade it out, like go a little bit in and then deselect avert, go a little bit in, deselect avert. So I'm pushing it like that, does that make sense? Kind of fading how, how much I'm pushing in as I go. Um, awesome, okay, so that is established and and I need to start thinking about holding edges because the approach I'm going to use is, is treating each car panel like a thin sheet, almost like it's really constructed. Like you take, you know, sheet metal and you stamp it. Um, so I'm going to treat it that way, meaning to get our thickness, we can add a solidify modifier. I'm going to add it above. And now we can probably start holding or adding holding edges. So that means right here, control R, cutting that very tight. Also this entire edge, control B for the bevel tool. And then I like to go up to two uh, segments and then make sure that my profile is at one. All right, so now we've got very crisp lines, but remember we wanna fade this one out over here. So the way we do that is I'm gonna slide these two edges, this edge, to the middle, this edge to the middle, select everything in the tools, go choose uh, remove doubles. That's going to merge all the verts that are on top of each other right there. And then hit control X on this edge right here. Control X, just move that one up slightly. There we go. Now we have a very nice fall off. I think that uh, feels pretty close to the art. Actually, it might need to be one more up. I wonder if I need to actually do that here. Alt M at center. Um, I don't think I actually liked it better this way. Uh, oh, apparently there was a sick trick in there. Ah, oh, man, I wish, wish I knew which one it was. Cause I would try and repeat that. <laughs> Okay, um, well, cool. So I'm gonna continue cutting holding edges in here. And let's see. The reason I'm, I'm, I'm kind of being shy, I'm gonna actually undo that. I'm shy about the middle because if I look at the top view, like I'm gonna continue this shape all the way over to this contour and then that's where I'm going to end it. So I don't want to add, like I I try to have all my contours established in a single piece before I begin at like adding all my holding edges because holding edges can make the topology harder to work with. So um, with let's just go ahead and turn off my subdivision surface with Control Zero. As long as your object is selected in edit mode, then con you can hit Control Three for three levels of subdivision or uh, Control Zero to turn it off question uh, how do you keep those interior lines of faces from bleeding over your line of edges describing the inside face makes sense let me read that again how do you keep those interior lines of faces from bleeding over your line of edges uh crap i'm sorry i'm not sure exactly what that means man i'm sorry greg i'm gonna um how do you keep those interior lines of faces from bleeding over your line of edges describing the inside face? Man, I don't, that's, I'm not sure I'm not sure what you mean. Um, let's see, Jonathan Lampel addressed the, bend, the bent quad problem, his all quad junctions video. On the inside of the wheel. Oh, oh, um, are you talking about with the solidify modifier? How 
sometimes like with with sharp edges the solidify modifier will will create bad geometry um and since we're you I'm, I'm sorry greg shoot um i'm not sure how we can how i can make sense of it i don't know if you can uh, i don't know i don't know what you mean but I mean, if you're talking about the solidify modifier, since we're using it at such a thin thickness, um, like we're able to get away with it. But yeah, sometimes the th the uh, solidify modifier can cause those problems. Uh, okay, so when I create a, a face from edges, then delete the face, the quad edges run over. Run over. I'm. I don't know why this is so hard for me to understand. I feel like I should, as a modeler, be able to relate to what you're talking about. Um, you said when you create faces. No, don't be sorry at all. I'm sorry. I, I want to be able to answer you. I think he's asking how you keep the inside surface of your wheel from projecting through the outside surface when you're editing the outside surface. Oh, are you talking about when it's smoothed? projecting through the outside surface when you're editing the outside surface. Goodness, I'm getting I'm getting crazy confused. Okay, that is what you're talking about. Inside surface of the wheel from projecting through the outside surface. Um shoot. Let's try and get together in the community thread. I, I'm curious how I would like maybe a crease. I'm not using any creases. I'm just using holding edges. So there's no crease values on anything. Um, yeah, I am just not sure what you're talking about. I would love to be able to solve it for you. Um, big scale and, oh, is that what you're talking about? Like a, um, Okay, Z fighting. Um, I, okay, I, my mind's going a bunch of places right now. But if you're talking about the re to, the clipping value, are you talking about in some of my retopology stuff how I used to use this clip value to maintain a topology? And so, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna second Darren's suggestion. If you can if you can put a picture in the community thread, let's t let, let's figure that out. I absolutely want you to be able to have this understand it. Okay, have, have this understood. Uh, nothing to be sorry about at all. I'm I'm sorry I wasn't able to understand. I guess the stream is good for communication, but it's not perfect. Um, more reason for us to do a, a physical class one one of these days. Um, Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to continue on. I'm, we'll, we'll solve that later in the community thread for sure. Um, all right. So I, I want to define the rest of the contours. Control zero to go to my low poly. And I'm going to start extruding. I mean, I don't, I don't want to start there. I want to start here and extruding over to start creating this uh, face. Because I know that this is one solid piece. Let's not fill it in quite yet. And remember, I can turn any three vertices into one the same way I did over here. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm just connecting to each to, to the side. Like I'm, I'm creating a vert for each vert that's uh, adjacent to it, corresponding to it. All right, so we're going to come down here. And this is where it cuts across. All right, like that. Now, in so I've done that from the top view. Let's continue that this way. And then I think that will connect. But with these, before I connect, now that I've got this contour drawn, it's straight from the top view, right? So that does not align, but it gives us the verts needed and one half of the of the dimensional information. Um, now I need to fill in the other half e using either the side view or the front view. I'm gonna use the front view 
which is actually right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go vert by vert and just move this down in Z until it touches where it needs to touch, right there at that corner. Now, this is the fun game I keep talking about that makes this process fun. However, for some reason, on the top angle, we see the, the contour that identifies like the hood, what I'm considering the hood of the car. But for some reason, it is not popping up in the front. So we've got to use our... Uh, you, we got to fill in the gaps, right? And we've got to sort of pull this down and create that curvature until we get to a point Okay, so I'm supposed to be right here, right? So that's getting very close. But this, it means I probably need to pull it all down a little bit so that we have this nice swooping curve. All right, that's just me filling in the gaps. And then and then once I get beyond, beyond this one contour, like I need to think about the other side because think spatially. All right, so right, uh, that's not what I wanted. So far, yeah, so far we've got this contour, right? Oh, okay. Actually, we do have a little more information. See, we see that edge from the side view. That's gonna help us a little bit more. So it's actually more like that. It's an even steeper curve than I thought. Okay, question. Um, is it is it bad at all if quads are not 100% planar? I kind of feel like quads should be 100% planar, but following some courses, it seems not important. So the um, it can be okay with quads not being planar when you're using a subdivision surface modifier like we are. Okay, so in this case, these are definitely not... I mean, there's actually probably a lot that are non-planar, right? So you can see the, that there's the... Blender actually cuts this quad and all quads into triangles, and you can kind of see how it it kind of has this, you know, shading to it because it's cutting it uh, into triangles. Um, but whenever we add the subdivision surface, that fixes it. Control three, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not a problem anymore. Now ignore this because we've got bad topology, but yeah, it's not an issue when you use it correctly, I guess. I'm, let me, I'm trying to think when it is a, a explicit example when it's used incorrectly. Um, well, I, I would say beyond a certain, so like a non, as long as the non-planar characteristic is not that strong, but if I was putting it, if I was trying to create a corner, let me turn off the subdivision surface. Okay, here's where it becomes a problem, right? So it's essentially a corner here, but I'm trying to make it one quad. That becomes a problem, but when it's really, it's it's non-planar, but just barely, I think that's when it's not such a big problem. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, subdivision surface um, solves a lot of the issues with with your non-planar geometry. Um, when you use it subtly like this, just, just be careful with non-planar, don't make it extreme. And it's usually pretty intuitive when when something is bad like that, right? Like that just, it starts to create really bad, bad issues with the, with the geometry. So it's pretty intuitive when it's a problem, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> uh, cool. So, uh, um, all right. Yeah. So we've established the contour here. This little, this little bit in the, in the blueprint blueprint helped us out. So now if we select that entire edge, um, wow, it goes all the way over here and then look in the side view, we can start to see that, well, we have to fill in the gap that as this curve happens this way, it needs to continue on the other side of the wheel well, right? So over here, this vert needs to come down. It needs to continue. These need to continue coming down like this. Let me just position them somewhat correctly. This is where it can get a little tricky. All right, so now if I select that again, let's get rid, to make it less confusing, get rid of the grease pencil. Wait, what is this one? Okay, I need to scale it in Z according to that vertex. There we go. All right, so now that we've got this contour, all right, can you see how that just makes more sense in context of the car? 
whereas before it was kind of jutting up out here. Now we don't have explicit information to tell us that in the blueprint, other than from various angles, we can see that the curb is not smooth. Okay, I hope that's making sense. Uh, Omar, so the vertex is lagging because of OBS, which is how I'm streaming. For whatever reason, OBS plus uh, background images makes makes it lag. Uh, I'm not sure why. You can see that it, it behaves pretty well when navigating the viewport mostly. But yeah, when I start moving vert vertices, watch, I'll turn off uh, background images and all of a sudden we're good to go again. So. I don't know what it is about streaming and having ver uh, background images, but that really uh, slows down. And I apologize for that. I'm sure that's pretty annoying. Um, but anyway, I hope that's, I was trying to explain like how to make sense of this curvature when you don't really have as much information as you need. I hope that was helpful, but you know, some of it just like when I first modeled this, I had to, blunt blunt uh, no no brute force uh, figure it out like it just wasn't lining up and then over time you kind of figured it out oh thanks yeah maybe it is a bug maybe just like a the wrong allocation of resources or something not the, not wrong but not optimized or something but yeah appreciate you submitting that all right so now that i've got that contour pretty much worked out i'm going to start filling our faces and this shape is um starting to come to life come to life, uh, be better. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, all right, let's uh, extrude this over. And so that's that gives me the wrong, I need to hit control and periodically when I'm doing, when you're doing edge modeling, you'll see that some faces are filled the wrong way and you just need to select everything and hit control in. And uh, connecting edge to edge really helps the shape kind of build itself in a way. Like if you were trying to box model this and worry about all the in-between as you go, it would just be a nightmare. Um, but if I look at the front, we kind of come to the same issue where while the, the blueprint looks fairly straight, it's actually got just a slight curve. I'm exaggerating it, but it's just got a slight curve there. So I need another edge. I need another edge to cut down the middle and then alt S to push them out about like that. And from the front, we can also see this edge needs to come forward. I'll just do that one a little bit as well. All right. Uh, I'm trying to be precise with this. So keeping in mind these subtle little touches, like just pushing that vertex out a little bit, uh, that edge out a little bit is going to give curvature to the shape once it's, once it's smooth, control three, you can see it just gives a subtle curvature to that. It's not perfectly straight anymore. Man, we have got to get some holding edges to make this look right. Um, bear with me, we're getting there. Oh, so you're, you're wasting memory when you're putting a big image used three times. If you cut it to pieces using them as background, it may help with lag. See, I thought it was the, I mean, I haven't tested it admittedly, but I thought that would be the opposite where you know, like like in games, you know, the general understanding is you use less memory to put multiple, like use one big texture rather than using a bunch of small textures. So I thought it was actually the opposite, but maybe you're right. Maybe I should have cut it up um, and that would have solved it. I try, I tested it with image planes to see if that was faster. Um, I tried to, sh I, I cut the resolution down a little bit, but also made it black and white so that it had less color information. But anyway, none of it seemed to work, but um, yeah, I mean, that's a valid approach, I would say. Um, though I did think it was the opposite, if I'm honest. Curiosity, how well would the kit bashing method work for car modeling? I actually think it would work very well for conceptual car modeling. I'm not sure if I was trying to model this vehicle very precisely, if if it would be good to kit bash. Usually when I think of kit bashing, by, you know, by definition, kit bashing is like, um, what am I trying to say? Kit bashing is like, trying to bang out a new shape very fast rather than precisely banging out a new shape. Does that make sense? So if I want to create something complex, like I'll try and kit bash. If you've seen my sci-fi helmet course, I tried to do that um, where 
you can use a bunch of shapes to get complexity quickly, but um, what am I trying to say? You can use complexity to get a bunch of shapes quickly, but not precisely, I wouldn't say. Um, I'm starting to think if I need, I'm starting to wonder if I need multiple edges. I don't, maybe not. I'm trying to think if I would need to, if it would be smarter to break this up like that, but I think it's gonna be fine with the one shape. Keep it simple. Wait a minute, what was that? Sorry, trying to fill that face right there. Okay, the geometry is terrible, but now that we've established the whole, uh, this entire piece of the car, I can finally add our finishing holding edges. So let's start to do that. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna delete these faces real quick because I find it easier to cut edges without them there and fill in the gap after the fact. So I've just filled that as a triangle, cut, Use a control R to cut a single vertex here. I'm gonna scale it close to that vert, fill in. Do the same thing over here, control R. Get it pretty tight. Whoops. Fill in as a triangle, control R. And that's actually pretty close. No, it's not. It needs to be scaled a little bit closer. All right, so that's that's gonna start feeling much, much better. Do I need another one on the other side? I've, uh, you might, if anyone's wondering like why I always do three edges, can you get away with two? I find that two edges generally, like if you do three edges, it kind of keeps that rule of three all the way around your model and adding two, you know, kind of breaks it, whoops. It kind of breaks that consistent math. So I generally try to stick to uh, doing always, if a holding edge, always do three and don't do two. All right, the same kind of thing, whoops. Wait a minute, why is this, something's happening. Why is the edge? I don't know, I couldn't figure out why that was <laughs> um, out of alignment. All right, that's looking pretty nice and sharp. Now let's see what I've done to the geometry down here. I'm gonna leave uh, subdivision surface mode, control, make sure that's selected in object mode. Then it will work in edit mode. All right, so I've got, I need to harden this edge. There we go. I'm getting a lot of geometry down here as well. So what I'm thinking, I need to add a hard edge here. And this kind of gets annoying like when there's such a big difference between, you know, the faces are, are really thin here, but it's really thick over here. So when you cut an edge loop, you've got a big discrepancy. So I'm just gonna cut the edge as close to one side, the majority, you know, that where it works for the majority of the shape. And then I'm gonna have to gradually like taper it over here, move it further away. And since it's so clustered down here, I think what I'm gonna do is merge all of these into one. Alt M at center. And just make this a little, or simplify this geometry a bit. Whoops. Oh, so the reason it jetted out there was because of the solidify modifier. So let's remove that, remove doubles, there we go. I think that should be good. Let me make sure I can smooth all my, okay, smooth shading. Now control three, how's that looking? Oh, I gotta remove this. Control X. There we go. Yeah. 
Now, when I do that and create the, you know, from a triangle, essentially like create a quad, I like to pull that vertex up a little bit. Sorry, I see that. I think I'm missing some a question or two in the chat. I'm going to get to that right now. Okay. So it's starting to look a little bit better. Double check how it's aligning, which it really, um, it's not aligning quite yet. And this is just some manual pushing and pulling of verts until that looks good. Also for cars, you know, mat caps are brilliant for it. We've got a couple car specific, like car paint shaders that make perfect sense, as you can imagine. Works pretty good. The blue one, I think I might like a little bit better. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. Um, but I want to just make sure that this is looking good. I'm not sure how far this needs to come into the car, so I'm just going to push it way in just to make sure that it's going to um, intersect when it needs to. All right. Okay, let me look at some questions. I'm sorry, I've, I've been avoiding it. It's coming down here. Um... Curiosity, do you remember when you added a camera in Blender it was always really zoomed in. How did you solve that? I remember what, like a lot of my tutorials when I would go into camera view, I'd have to zoom out. I, it must have had something to do with, with my startup file. Like, um, let me save this real quick and give an example. Uh, week two stream 01. Uh, so if I start a new file, and let's say, you know, you can save settings as a startup file so that they're default. So I wonder if, you know, in my default scene, I accidentally zoomed way in and then, you know, left camera view and then saved my uh, startup file. I wonder if that happened, you know, years ago and I just didn't, didn't notice it or didn't realize I had done that. But that's the only thing I can think of is why, because now if I default went into the camera, I'd have to zoom back out. Um... So that must, I must have been the thing. Um, question, does it, is it better to create the general shape? Let's see. Is it better to create the general shape, my model, and cut it to isolate each piece or create directly each piece? I have found that it's actually better to go piece by piece, but kind of a mixture, actually. Um, let, me, let me alter this a little bit, though. I want to... I'm not really getting this the way I'd like it. That's closer. Okay, so I have created this piece like isolated by itself 100%, but I'm going to move on to the hood piece now, and I'm actually going to just select this geometry and duplicate it to begin that next piece. And so it's gonna be very consistent rather than me modeling you know, from this piece the hood and keep it connected. So that's how I'm gonna approach it, but I actually find that going piece by piece can be a little more intuitive. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it's nothing wrong with, with doing multiple pieces together and then dividing it after the fact. But since the car gives us very clear uh, construction lines and, and separation, I'm just going piece by piece. Let's see. I feel like this is not looking good though. has something to do with this connection, which is pretty extreme, certainly. There we go, it's looking pretty good. Pretty slick. All right. Um, there's a couple more things I need to, um, I need to, a couple more T's I need to cross and I's I need to dot. So right here, this edge is pretty, or this corner is pretty hard. And right now I don't have the definition for that. So it should be pretty simple since this is a con, what is it? A convex corner. I think that's the way to say it. Like in other words, 
you know, in this case, this is a convex corner, but in this case, like in a Pac-Man, these are concave corners. Or no, no, I'm not using the right words. That's how I think of it in my head, but I think this is like acute angle versus obtuse angle, something like that. Um, but hopefully you get the point. Like I'm looking at, with corners like this, it's actually very easy to maintain those edges. Uh, and I'll show you right here how you can do that. Simply by cutting edges like this and removing that middle one, control X. Now you've got a nice sharp edge right there, nice sharp corner. Oh, wait a minute, I lost, not control X. Let's just delete the edge, only edges. Yeah, well, what in the world? And fill it, there we go. All right, so we got a nice sharp uh, corner. It is pinching a little bit though. Why is that? It has to do with non-planar. Uh, there we go. Hmm. I don't know. I don't love that for some reason. Maybe for one, let's uh, let's try this again. I'm gonna move these up and actually connect them back here. I think that's better. Uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be better. Cool. And finally, I do need a hard edge at the very bottom. Oh, I'm not done with this piece. I'm sorry, there is another aspect over here that I've completely neglected. All right, so it's this, this, uh, this little guy right here. Let me talk about it by itself. So we have this random edge, or it seems random contour that we get literally no information other than this side view. So I'm not, you know, it's arguable, like what do we even do with that? How, how do we make sense of what this shape is? Until we look at the back, there is evidence in the back, which let me go to control one. And that's right here on this, on the back of the car, on the wheel well, we have a kind of chunk taken out um, that we can see corresponds to a similar shape right here. Okay, so this little, the same edge that we see up front is in the back, but it's a, it's a slice out of it. It's a chunk missing. So let's, uh, we can create that using the back as reference. All right, so that means I need to slide this edge down actually. How am I gonna do that? I should have done that from the start, but I need an edge to be, to define that very explicitly. Right, something like this. Let me turn off my subdivision surface. All right, so now we've got a uh, edge in our geometry defining that straight line. And what does that do to this geometry though? Ooh, I don't know, is that okay? Let's see, maybe I should, okay, that's what, I think that's okay. It's not the prettiest geometry, but it's not messing anything up. All right, so back to that, that edge. Need to figure out what to do here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to cut using my K for knife cut, knife tool. I'm gonna cut an, an edge right like that at the bottom. And then I'm going to move it in X. Okay, so we're going to create that chunk. And then I also need to move these down, or these move, move these in as well. So 
something like that, okay? So now that's going to look more like the back, okay? We even kind of hit the same, uh, it's the right amount of space in. Sorry, I feel like my commentary is getting worse and worse as time goes by. Um, I haven't had to, I think that's just kind of part of it is naturally I get worse at commentating what I'm doing. It's weird talking by yourself in a room. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever tried streaming, but it can be a little weird. Um, trying to make excuses for why my commentary is getting worse. All right, so we've got that shape. It's not, see, I've been pushing and pulling the verts and it's not been, it's not keeping the shape very rigid, which is not ideal. So if I want to try and get those shapes back, like I'm gonna take this, slam it up into the, using uh, edge slide G twice, I'm gonna slam it up there. That creates a flat surface and then I'll bring it right back down. Okay, so that kind of makes it rigid again. I will need to though, pull that in. Okay, so we've got this edge. Now we gotta add them as holding it. We've got this like slice taken out of it, but we gotta add holding edges. I'm gonna do it, he whoa. Uh, this geometry is just getting worse and worse. I forgot how I handled that originally. Okay, so we add holding edges in there. And since it comes down to a triangle corner, I'm just going to merge these at the center. Now, where did this edge go? That is such a stretch polygon. <laughs> okay, but it's actually, the shape actually looks really good now. Um, I do need to add, I wanna add some interior because uh, interior edges right here, let's control zero. Because I broke my rule, I'm only using a holding edge of of like one holding edge essentially, which creates two lines. So I wanna create, I'm gonna delete this face, create one up top and then one down below. And then this is gonna be a little weird. I'm gonna extrude this, but leave it by itself, Alt M at center, and then scale this down here. Okay, so we're gonna create that triangle. Now just fill in. There we go. Now we've got good geometry, three holding edges, and that shape has been cut very nicely. All right, nice and crisp model. I'm gonna turn off my mat cap, give it a different perspective. All right, it's looking good, but notice there's a, there's a kink right here in the curvature. And that's because I've, I've got an uneven amount of geometry. So Alt or Control Zero. Let's see why that is. Oh, that's why, because I've got this edge cut in here, but it's not evenly spaced. So we need to fix that. It might be actually easier to do that with subdivision on. So Control Three. Yeah, it might be easier just to move them around like that. Okay, I think that fixed the kink, fixes the kink. This, however, is out of alignment with the blueprint. I'm gonna enable proportional editing because I'm just gonna bring it slightly. Proportional editing, by the way, enable that with Control, with Alt-O, because I like, uh, Alt-O enables the proportional connected, specifically. 
That's my preferred method in most situations. All right. Now, after, gosh, what has that been, like an hour? Um, granted, it goes slower when you're trying to commentate it or whatever, but um, I actually also think I'm going to remove the holding edge. Like this shelf, I think I'm going to end it right here so that right here we, we maintain the shelf and then right here it's just straight. So that means I can remove the holding edge from the bottom. Be easier to do this without subsurf on. And then remove doubles. Control uh, D. Control X, sorry. Control 3. There we go. Ooh, but it's got this unfortunate curve. Turn off proportional editing and let's move that so we get it a little straighter. And I think I'm going to do the same thing that I did earlier. So when you have a, a kink like this, I'm just going to slide all these edges that way and then back to 0.5. All right, that will re well make it rigid rigid again. But then this one, I'll do the same. There we go. Control three. All right, we've got that nice straight edge. All right, now, knock on wood, but I believe I'm completely done modeling that piece of geometry, <laughs> that one piece of the car. It doesn't need to go that slow. Um, it certainly won't go that slow if you're not trying to explain everything that you're doing to yourself. Um, but that's kind of the workflow. And then I'm gonna continue this I'll continue for the next 20 minutes or so, just make it an even like half hour or hour and a half that we've been doing this. But let me make sure I'm not missing questions. I know I'm missing questions. Sorry, guys. Question from David. David, what's up, man? Um, Kent, will you utilize the shrink wrap modifier slash guide mesh method on this? Or have you already? Um, no, so I'm not doing that. When the guide mesh shrink wrap modifier. Oh, wait, I will. I will. There's one, uh, I particularly will use that on the um, the cockpit. I don't know, it doesn't, I don't know what you call this, the, the cab or whatever of the car where people sit. It looks more like a cockpit. Um, but for the glass, I am gonna use a shrink wrap modifier because I wanna make sure that that absolutely is round like a spherical shape. I don't want any pinches or whatsoever. So I am gonna use the shrink wrap on that shape especially, but that's only really because it can be it, it, the shape can be achieved uh, principally with with a very smooth um, egg shape. Um, ah, man, yeah, I, I should probably... That is something I would want to show. Uh, that took longer than I wanted to to get that piece built. Let me... I, I think I can quickly in the next 10 minutes get this other piece built and then maybe end it. Ah, oh, man, the time goes... I, I haven't done any mechanical bits like rivets or calipers or anything like you guys said um but yeah i am tempted because I, I do think that's important to to try and achieve that shape with a with a shrink wrap modifier but let me keep going through the questions question what car do you drive in real life um so my my wife and i ha, ha bought a van recently and that's what i'm driving lately uh so Nothing, nothing to write home about too much. It's a, called a Pacifica, the Chrysler Pacifica. But, um, I mean, I guess it's cool as far as vans go, but it's not the coolest car in the world. Um, question, do you, do you sometimes also start with a block out rather than directly starting without detailing subsurf? If, if so, would you, would you do a, a block out, a rough block out first? Um, so for me personally, if as is probably fairly obvious from the, um, oh, I need to add a holding edge right here. Um, well, anyway, um, I, when I'm modeling this way, I really like to see the final result. So, you know, I could model all of the contour shapes 
in low res without any holding edges. Like we could do that and then go to the next piece and do that, do it for all pieces and then kind of broadly start adding holding edges as one big pass. I mean, you could do that. The reason I can't is I'm impatient and I wanna see, I wanna get the reward of seeing the fully smooth version of this piece given the amount of effort I've put into it already. So that's kind of why I approach it this way. And there's something kinky about this. Kinky meaning it just kind of dips down right there. I'm not sure why. Ah, so distracted. Um, modeling is constantly like a re revising, revising, like looking over the model, fixing it, looking it over, fixing it. But that's why I go ahead and model with the holding edges and full subsurface on each piece because I'm essentially done with this piece. And now when I move on to the next one, I'll be done with that piece um, and just kind of build it completely one step at a time. It's different than what I do sculpting, you know, where I say try to avoid detailing a certain area before you detail others. Um, it is different with this for me. Um, I guess in this case, I would detail later if it was like little rivets and, and things like really fine frequency details I would do later. But as far as the fully smooth subsurface shape, I like to get that um, accomplished earlier rather than later. Hmm. So I'm just trying to smooth this out completely. It was a little too thin in the back. Man, I really should like be streaming for like six hours straight to actually see most of the car built. Maybe what I'll do is model, like record the next couple hours of me modeling and then like post that as a time lapse so that you can see a little bit more. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you, are, um, would you? Do you think that's necessary? Or do you, th like literally it's the same workflow applied everywhere. And um, I don't know if, if that makes sense to you. Maybe press one in the chat if like, if you think, no, I get the idea, I can apply this to my car. Um, or I would like to see a time lapse of more of the vehicle. Um, do a press two. So if you don't need more, if you don't need a time lapse, press one. If you do need a time lapse, press two. Um, Question, what car do you have in real life? Got to that one. Question, for my car, I've, been, I've begun by modeling the whole shape, then separate pieces from the block out to, de to detail or modification. Is it good or bad just way, or just different? Yeah, okay, similar to the last question. I think that's fine. I I've seen your car. I you were the example that I used. I think you were the example I used, um, but it's turned out much better already, what I've seen. Um, that it's that old car with a big, long front. And yeah, and the way you're going about it is totally fine. Um, if you're, you're, you're seeing success, continue that way. Let's see. <laughs> Getting a, a pretty sweet Lord of the Rings reference in there. A question, how would you apply a saucy stripe uh, where you want the same shader info, but a different color? Man, I probably would not do that with geometry. I would probably do that as a, as a simple texture. I know that's probably not ideal, but yeah, when you're dealing with holding edges and such smooth curvature, like to add, for example, if I wanted to add like a stripe, you know, that was, no, that's not a good example. What is a good example? Oh, okay, here, let me try that again. Um, on this piece, if I wanted to add a stripe you know, like this, at this angle for some reason, let's say we're just adding these weird stripes like this, that'd be incredibly difficult with geometry since my geometry already has a very specific flow. So I would just add those stripes with a texture. I wouldn't do it with geometry. I think the reason you'd wanna do it with geometry is you can simply add an, another material to that face, um, but I don't think that's the best way to go about it. Warning, this live stream contains explicit content. Sorry, I said, I think that's probably from the kinky comment. Um, there's a lot of fiddling with vertices. Yes, granted, like I gotta say that this is a this has been very much slower than it would have gone normally um, between answering questions and like trying to explain, th you know, things that are hard, that I don't intuitively explain. Um, 
So it doesn't normally go this slow. And after this piece, it's just gonna pick up and go faster and faster. Um, I, can, I can show you my practice file. Let me do that, file open. So this is as far as I got after modeling for like three or four hours. Um, so yeah, you don't, it does not need to go that slow. But here's the piece we've been working on. It's a little bit different. I extruded inside a little bit. But uh, anyway, that's kind of um, where I got in three or four hours. So it doesn't have to go so slow. Let's see if there's any more questions. Question, how do you fill in all the faces there? Lasso marked edges around problematic area and then filled in all the faces with only one key. Yeah, um, I think what you're talking about, open week two stream. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you were talking about is right here. Whenever I essentially had these faces gone at only delete only edges and faces. Nope, delete only faces. This was the geometry that I think you're probably talking about. Control zero. So essentially what I have, it's a little bit hard to tell. Okay, this is, makes it easier. You can see where I've got connected edges and missing faces. The only missing faces are these quads right here. They are our quad geometry. So if you select that whole section, Blender is smart enough to fill in what's missing, like the quads that are missing. And that's how you did that. That's how that's done. Sorry about that, I, was, I must have been going too fast. Question, is there a reason why you don't use the even feature on the edge slide when you, oh, would that have made my job a ton easier? Control R. Even. Wonder, wonder how that works. Oh, how can I test this? How about, how about, let me try and test it. Let's say like this, if I wanted to cut Huh, I'm not sure. Oh, I can see how it works up there. Oh, that's good. So if I, usually it works like that, but if I go to even, ah, interesting. Huh, maybe that, I need to use that. I honestly don't use that tool. I don't think I've ever used that tool before or that, um, that option in the tool, but I will try. Yeah, that's, that seems like a pretty cool Pretty cool option. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of running out of time. I'm sorry, guys. Um, question, do you suggest we start by blocking it out our vehicle and then detailing it? Um, if you have a bunch of rivets and stuff on your vehicles, yeah, I would, I mean, I would wait till later to add those things. I, I definitely, if there were rivets and, and such, um, I don't know what else there would be, little, little rivets, I guess, um, little holes or screw holes or something. I would do that later. I wouldn't, I don't think I would do that now. But yeah, in general principle, like it kind of means, it kind of depends what you mean on block out. Um, it's, a, it's a generally good principle, I, I would say, like to block out and um, to block out and then detail later. I'm sorry, kind of blanking. Maybe I shouldn't have chosen a tank to model. No, I think that's fine. I like to see the variety. Um, anything else? Oh, awesome. David, the GG slide to straighten stuff back out again. I'm glad you found that helpful. Awesome. Sometimes it's just like a single tip that can make a whole tutorial worth watching. <laughs> or um, I guess a stream or something. Let's see, am I missing anything else? Okay, two, 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 one, one. Okay, cool, yeah, I'll do that. I did, this did take longer than I expected and it did not progress as much as I wanted. So I will spend a couple hours either today or tomorrow recording that time-lapse and I'll post it. And 
and yeah, you guys can see a little bit more of that workflow continued. So sorry, I didn't get to finish all that. Okay, a lot of twos. <laughs> cool. Good. All right, I will happily do that. But please slow down for the tricky places, making some triangle to all quad switches, etc. Um, okay, I mean, a, the, a time lapse by nature will be pretty fast. Um, maybe I should do a stream specifically about like topology junctions, which, you know, turning triangles to quads, that kind of thing. <laughs> what do you know about the rioters of bro? Huh? I love it. <laughs> um, okay, I will try to, to make that pretty apparent whenever I do that kind of stuff, uh, like turn doing specific junctions. But nice warm up. Okay, cool. Um, all right, I think that's all the questions. Yeah, such a stream would be awesome. Okay, I'm gonna make a note of that to focus on topology junctions. The tricky part with, is gonna be how to like teach that in the right context, because that kind of stuff will happen frequently when you're modeling like a complex vehicle like this, but you almost have to go through the vehicle to get to those small little, little topology fixes. So um, anyway, I've gotta figure out how to teach that intuitively and concisely. But yeah, I think that's a great topic for a stream. Question totally not related, but any intentions for making another stream about freelancing? Yeah, I, we do. We want to do that again. Um, kind of cover that topic periodically, I guess. Uh, I guess for the main reason to, for other people who didn't, who weren't, who didn't join pre previously to get, get to ask questions or, you know, try and make the information different, accommodating to whoever's watching. But this has been the best stream so far. Wow, I'm surprised to hear that. I, when I'm when I'm modeling for an hour and a half, by the by the end, I feel like no one's here anymore. I am just babbling. Um, I feel like I've made no progress. But I mean, that's that's cool to hear that you've learned something <laughs> or that it's been the best. Cool. All right. Well, I'll do that time lapse. I'm gonna let you guys go. I, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't plan on keeping you um, too much longer, but. Um, let's see, is there anything I can do in the last eight minutes? What is a caliper? Let me look that up. A cal mechanical caliper. Let's see if that's something I could model real quick. Ooh, like a, oh, is that, is this what we're talking about? Ooh, it's kind of a lot. Okay, I would say that maybe better t is to simply get the video with only those junction spots from modeling the car. Oh, okay, that's cool. It's not a bad idea. Um, trying to think of what mechanical, like that caliper was, is gonna take me, if I modeled it like this, that would take me like at, at least 30 minutes to an hour. Brake caliper, that's what I should be searching. Oh my goodness. Um, Jeezy Pete's, that's intense. Um, how about a spring in shock? <laughs> that's intense. I'm not gonna be able to do that in eight minutes. Spring and shock. It's just so complex. Like look at all those intricate little, that's maybe not terribly complex. Spring and shock. Okay, well, I mean, I can try and maybe bang that out real quick. I don't know why I'm saying bang that out. Is that it sounds bad coming out, but I don't mean it bad. Okay, yeah, let's uh let's talk about a spring. I haven't modeled one of these in a while. A spring and a shock. Does it go into each other like this? Oh, here we go. This is probably the best example. I'm gonna pull this over to the side. So a spring and a shock. Let's see what we can do with that. All right, cool. I'm going to try this spring and shock real quick. I'm just going to do it in a new scene. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess that totally makes sense if you guys are, are modeling, if your vehicle reveals that kind of stuff. For my particular vehicle, I guess it, it didn't show those these mechanical details. It's all very hidden very sports car-esque, um, but you would need to model these, need to know how to model these things. 
So I'm going to start with a cylinder and model the the, uh, the piston. That's not what you called it. Brake and spring and spring and shock. Um, so I'm going to start. Uh, let's see. It's going to be modeled for smooth. So typically, when I model for smooth, I like I like a level of eight. So uh, let's go to circle actually, and I'm going to do eight vertices. Might seem really low res, but it typically smooths pretty nice, and it's it's a very manageable amount of verts to work with. So I'm going to start. All right, bear with me. Um, I'm just I'm just going to start going, rather than trying to explain every little detail. Since this isn't rehearsed, it's just going to be more going with it. <laughs> All right, so, and y'all can't really see. Maybe it would help if I load the image. Let's see. All right, open the image. Downloads. All right, so this is the image I'm trying to model, and I'm starting with this section up here. Let's see what's going on right there. I'm not sure. But let's just go with it. Whoa, when you get your hand position wrong on your keyboard, the hotkeys go crazy. And it's just got this weird shape. But I'm interpreting like this. Maybe it's like a bushing. I think that's the right term. Look for bridge edge loops. That'll make that very simple. All right, so this is a case where I am blocking out the shape first, and then it'll be, with these cylindrical shapes, it's gonna be very easy to add holding edges like in one, one swoop. All right, now I th this could be a little tricky. Maybe not. So I'm, I am interpreting this piece the bracket what that has the the hole <laughs> I'm not a very mechanical person but as being probably welded to this piece this uh, disc so I need to model those as if they're welded and huh so I'm with the eight count polygons so I'm thinking like it would be great to just fill this in like so and start extruding out, you know, and creating that shape. But the problem is I'm not facing in any one axis directly. So I'm thinking about just rotating the whole cylinder. Yeah, let's just rotate the whole cylinder. What is that gonna be? 22.5? Yeah, I think 22.5 straightens it out. Okay, and now I'll remember that value, 22.5. Okay, so if I ever need to go back, I can. But now I can use the axes to my favor and start extruding out this shape. All right, yeah, this turned out not to be too tricky so far. Famous last words. And let's see here. Now I need to figure out how to put a, a nice clean hole in it. All right, so how many, let's see. If I select this opening, we've got six verts. That is enough to make a hole. And I think that should be fine. Let's go to E, extrude. 
And then here's where loop tools comes in. If we go down to find our loop tools in the tool panel, we can go to circle and that will create a perfect circle from that geometry. Wait, there we go. That's what I was looking for. And then I'll just eyeball. Let's see. It's something like this. Sorry, I'm not being super precise. But um, yeah, okay, so here is where, this is kind of, these kind of details I find to be sort of fun. Opportunity to add a bunch of detail very quickly. And all I'm doing is kind of interpreting like what these various levels of the circle are like. All right, so I, I like adding those various depths is gonna look really nice once we smooth it. And then on the other side, I'm not using a mirror modifier, which maybe would be ideal, but I can't because remember I, I wonkified, I can't cut an edge down like this because then it won't smooth properly. So I'm kind of out of luck with the, with the uh, mirror modifier at this point, but I mean, we can work with it. Let's go to Shift D, rotate in Z 180, and then we will snap it. There we go. All right. Yeah, this is going to, this should look pretty cool. Oh, I need to connect in the middle. I'm gonna S scale shift X just to make that bigger. All right, I think we're close. All right, now let's try to smooth this out for build it for subsurface. Let's first just focus here because all I'm doing is highlighting the edges that I want to smooth out. And I actually think I want to keep a level of, of, of roundness. So I'm, I'm not going to change the profile to one. I'm going to leave it at 0.5. Let's see what that looks like. Let's smooth it out. Smooth out the... Uh, Okay, so here's a, an example of bad pinching. And uh, the bevel modifier just gave me bad geo down there. I didn't mean to go to local view. Control zero. So this is bad geometry. How am I going to fix it? You know, what might be helpful here is just to get rid of all of this. kind of start fresh. Okay, so let me let me get count the verts. I've got whoops. We've got 12 and I'm trying to make it go to 8. Hmm. First thing, let's extrude this out. Maybe turn this into a circle. Hmm. You know, if I just removed these edges, now we've got eight. How does that look smoothed? I'm kind of breaking the rule I just told you about. Uh, I'm using two edges instead of one, instead of three, but I do think that looks better. 
Oh well, rules are meant to be broken, right? All right, let's continue on with the beveling of this. See, I think that looks pretty good and mechanical. Um, and then in here, it should be a lot of fun, or really easy. And sometimes easy means a lot of fun to just go ahead and Yikes. Just select all of these edges and I'm just gonna make them hard. Hardened. Nice. I think that reads pretty well. Varying depths, it's gonna look nice if we wanna turn on ambient occlusion. I didn't really do much, did it? Uh, anyway, so yeah, we've got a nice little mechanical detail up there. Let's continue here. Pretty simple, just adding holding edges. That is so satisfying beveling all at once, isn't it? And sometimes like this can start to look bad or like, I don't know if CG is the right term, but it, it looks all very connected. And so sometimes just to break that up, I do like to, um, you know, push an edge up like this and enforce it a little bit better. So it looks like it's a separate piece, but that's very simple to do in this with this kind of shape. Kind of looks like a bushing, doesn't it? Man, everything takes longer when you model. I forget, but we're already, that's already taken me like 10 minutes, more than that. All right, so let me, I think you can get the idea about how I would get the other side of that. I mean, there's actually a lot of cool details down there, but let's try the spring just for fun. I'm gonna turn off the grid. The grid often, often frustrates me unless it's a floor. Like it, I've got some sort of OCD thing whenever I see a model like going through the grid floor, it just grinds my nerves. So I either always move it on top of the grid or I remove, or I just uh, hide the grid. But there's some free insight into my quirkiness. All right, so we uh, for, to get the spring, should be pretty simple except for that last bit. Like we can use it on the modifier, as a modifier. I need to remember how to do this. Um, it's a circle, nope, whoops. Shift a circle. We'll do it. We'll do it at eight. Sure. I um, mean, I think that the way this works, I'm going to add a screw modifier and then scale it down and move it into a direction. And now, yeah. And then iterations, that's what I'm looking for, boom. All right, pretty simple. Now, that's low resolution enough. It's definitely, it's too high resolution for like a game, but yeah, so I, we'll leave it like that. It's fine, it's gonna be fine when it's rendered, you know, with the subsurf modifier, that's looking good. And then we can apply everything but the subsurf, Alt-C, and then to match the reference, you know, we have to kind of pull this down. And 
and we would have to do similarly for the bottom. Anyway, so that was a real crash course. You know, probably didn't learn anything valuable from that, but let's see. Let me just. There we go. Something like that. Uh, did you notice that the grid in 2.8 is infinite? I did not. I didn't notice that. Man, so much about it. I could talk about 2.8 for a while. Um, it'd be kind of fun to have a stream where we just kind of nerd out about what we like in 2.8, but I'm sure we'll have plenty of opportunities to do that over the coming months. Um, can you do that with curves? Yes, you absolutely can. Actually, it would probably be better... There's probably pros to doing it with curves instead of instead of polygons to making that spring. Uh, yes, so it's a it's not a bad idea to do it with curves. Cool. All right. Well, I'm gonna let you guys go. This has been a lot of fun. Um, I hope it was helpful. Um, and I will do that time lapse in the next day or two, probably tomorrow. Um, streams typically wipe me out a little bit, but I, at least by tomorrow, and you can expect the recording of the stream on within 24 hours as well. And yeah, so get working on the exterior, uh, exteriors of your vehicles, post work in progress, ask questions, and, um, I will see you in the community thread. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you later.